Hello and good morning. Joe Justice here coming to you live on December 27th, 2022. Now, before I get started today, I want to tell you we're going to be talking about the top 10 tech trends for 2023. And if you have any of these trends in mind or any thoughts about 2023 coming up, I want you to drop a comment and let us know what you are looking forward to in 2023. I am also going to put in the comments a link to an article that I'm going to be discussing this week as we're going to be talking about these top tech trends. So interact with us. Let us know that you're out there. Talk to us. We want to see you on Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, uh, we'll be on YouTube. We're going to be all over the place. So wherever you're watching this from, drop us a comment. Let us know what you're looking forward to in 2023 and what kind of top, top tech trends you're looking forward to. It is, it is the day after Christmas. We are back in the office and back at it. Of course, IT people are never really out of the office, are we? That's kind of the the digital uh, uh, the digital handcuffs that we give ourselves. We make it so that we can work easily from home. We make it so that other people can work easily from home. And all we end up with is being at work all the time. But we had a great vacation, a great chance to be home with our families. I hope that you had that opportunity as well. So as I said at the top of the show, we are going to be talking about the top tech trends in 2023. So I'm going to dive right into that. You'll see in the comments there's an article here, and it's by and it's a Forbes article by uh, Bernard Marr, and he is a futurist. I've talked to you about futurists in the past. Futurists basically, what a futurist kind of started out as many moons ago was a futurist was a person that kind of guessed at what the future was going to be. But nowadays, they use a lot more data analytic tools and, and data crunching to get some of this information. So it's not, it's not all just blind guessing like it used to be. It's a little bit more reliable. One of my favorite things from futurists that they predicted back in the 60s was they thought that by now everybody would be wearing paper clothes. So instead of wearing, you know, washing your clothes and everything, we would just go to a vending machine and get a, a new set of clothes every morning and that's what we would wear and it's one of those funny things because that does make sense like if you were a futurist and you were writing back in the 60s you certainly wouldn't think of people wasting all this time and energy and water and everything on washing their clothes when you could just go to a vending machine and and get yourself a shirt and a pair of pants and just go on about your day and then just throw them away at the end of the day but we humans there are some things that we definitely like to hang on to right and clothing and style and fashion is definitely one of those things. So let's take a look at this list from a modern day futurist. And I, as I said, you can take a look at the link. It's in the uh, the comments. I want you to take a look and see which one of these, uh, you know, is the most interesting to you. We'll, we'll go through a few of these and get through as many as we can. Then we'll continue on throughout the week. First and foremost, number one, of course, has to be on there. AI is everywhere. In 2023, artificial intelligence will become a real will become real in organizations. No code AI with the easy drag and drop interface will enable any business to leverage the power to create more intelligent products and services. Now, this is definitely true. I think AI will probably be the big news of 2023, and it's going to really sneak up on people. I've been telling people for, for a little while now that AI is going to explode in a big way, and it's going to explode in what appears to be a very, very fast way. If you look at innovation cycles over the last 100, 150 years, going all the way back to the steam engine, you know, it would have taken 20, 30 years for the steam engine to have gotten regularly adopted and used. And then you take something like the phone system, it would have taken 20, 30 years for the phone system to get uh, adopted by the majority of Americans. But think about how quickly the internet was adopted. The internet was basically adopted overnight back in the 90s. I mean, by the mid 2000s, 10, 10 years after the real kind of mainstream emergence of the internet, and it was available basically everywhere. Um, and nowadays, you know, even uh, very, very poor countries have internet access and just about anywhere in the world has the ability and now with the newer technologies like Starlink it's really uh, it's really going to enable everything now 
Uh, that's the way, that's my framework for what I have in mind for what's coming with AI. AI is just going to explode. And even in his article here, he makes, he makes some odd statements that don't really mesh with what AI really is. And that's, that's going to be one of the big challenging aspects of AI is because I don't think people still to this day don't really understand what it is, what we're dealing with, and what it's going to be. So some of the examples that he gives are, are basically um, consumer recommendations. So he gives some examples of um, you know somebody going into a store and getting recommendations on what kind of clothes to wear. Well, we've had that for a very long time, right? I mean, going you know, back to the 90s, uh, especially early 2000s, you know, you would go to a store, you'd have some kind of a store card or loyalty card or something like that, and they would track your orders, or Amazon's a great example of this. They track what you're searching for, what you're buying, and then they recommend stuff based on that. And we refer to that as the algorithm. And uh, even in this article, he refers to this AI model that he's talking about as an algorithm. The algorithm will uh, do this and the algorithm will do that. But so, so you're thinking, and you're right to think this, like what's different about that? I mean, I've been recommended, Amazon recommends stuff to me all the time. Well, the difference is that AI is not really an algorithm. AI is, uh, is data trained, um, basically future prediction. So what what the as opposed to using an algorithm which starts out with a set um, uh, an algorithm basically starts out with a set list of things that it does in the order that it does them and then basic logic of if if this then that and and it's all kind of programmed from the top down and planned out that's an algorithm whereas artificial intelligence is something totally different you feed the data into the uh, the AI, into the artificial inte- intelligence, and the, the artificial intelligence has a basic framework of how to understand and interpret that data, and then it makes predictions based off of that data. So it doesn't. You're not starting with an AI. You're you're not starting with an algorithm. You're starting with a data understanding. Uh, mechanism, which you you could think of as an algorithm, which that's the only algorithmic part of AI. So it feeds all this data in and then it makes predictions. So the difference is going to be that you're going to get all kinds of like just easy drag and drop type stuff. You're not going to need algorithms to do this stuff. You're just going to tell the AI, figure out what this guy wants, and then it's going to look at all the data available for that guy and then it's going to spit it out. So it's going to use data from multiple people, it's, uh, multiple sources. It's going to use all kinds of information to be able to generate this stuff. And it's going to have, it's going to be trained by the internet. So it's going to be seeing what's trending, what's not trending, uh, wh- you know, what's going up, what's going down, what's similar. It's going to be able to differentiate between similar people and so forth and so on. And this is going to all happen very, very fast. That's what I think people don't quite realize because algorithmic learning What you have to do, or algorithmic-based computing, what you have to do is you have to create your algorithm and then you have to uh, iterative, and then you have to uh, update it iteratively. You have to, um, you have to update it little by little by little and make little tweaks, little changes, update it, and then, you know, so forth. With AI machine learning, it's constantly updating because it's constantly getting more and more feedback and more and more data. So it's going to be super fast. There's not going to be any humans involved in updating and fixing it and making it better and more accurate. And, and so what you're going to end up with really soon is AI is going to be creating AI. That's probably going to be the next step. And then those AIs created by AIs are going to get trained by AIs. And it's all going to happen so fast without humans being involved at all. And that's what we're going to be looking towards. And then so then these are going to be very disruptive technologies in industries like medicine and engineering and, um, you know, in, in the automotive industry. It's going to be able to take all of this data and it's going to be able to uh, learn everything there is from it and then be able to build houses. It's going to be able to, uh, to read MRIs. It's going to be able to uh, create art. It's going to be able to create designs, it's going to be able to build new types of bridges, it's going to be able to 
create molecular structures that are completely new to us that we would never think of as human beings, or maybe we would think of them, but we would think of them 100 years from now, it's going to be able to think of them right away. So I do think that AI is going to be the big, I think this year, 2023, is probably going to be the big breakout year for AI, and I think that's something pretty exciting to look forward to. It's going to be hugely disruptive, and I have no idea where it's ultimately going to go. But I think that it's going to be huge, and uh, that's going to be the big story. And that makes sense that he makes that as number one on his list. Tomorrow, we'll talk about some of the other topics, like the metaverse, which he has some interesting takes on, and uh, progress with Web uh, 3.0, and bridging the uh, physical and digital world. We'll get into some of that stuff tomorrow. That will cover what we have to talk about today. And we were able to use AI primarily because that is such a big topic. And we'll be talking about that a lot more in 2023. So be prepared for that. You guys have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow. And until then, bye for now.